Welcome to the Icon. Allow me the pleasure of introducing to you a sensitive dancer, an able choreographer, and an amazing teacher. Uh, it's my joy to introduce Srimati Rajeshwari Sainath to you. Namaste, ma'am. Namaste. Uh, you always sit to Melbourne. You have been to Melbourne uh, yes. quite often, and this time you performed at the uh, Pavilion, the M Pavilion. Uh, an open space, uh, a bit different class of viewers, a different set of viewers. How was the experience? Yeah, it was very good. I had um, uh, a stu uh, um, the audience, I had the students, uh, Monash students, and I had uh, a few scholars and of course dancers and a few Western um, you know, musicians whom I know them. And it was good. Uh, yeah, I've been performing. Uh, to different audience and this was also a different experience. Yeah, considering the Melbourne weather, yeah. the changing scenario. Yeah, but that day was, uh, fortunately it was a good bright sunny day coming from Chennai. It was an immediate next day and uh, I think weather was um, cooperating with us because it was in the open, you know, with right. so the weather was good, I enjoyed. It, uh, I could say that is that was a sort of an experimental work uh, in, in regards to space. Uh, teachers, with, you know, with an experience like yours, yeah. uh, sometimes demand that they need a dais, a yeah. stage. You know, they refrain from performing their art yeah. in an open space. Yeah. But you have always been experimental in your career yeah. as far as dance has been concerned. When I actually reached the venue, I thought, oh my God, this is what it is. And then I said, okay, I'm an artist. Right. I have to adapt to the conditions. And uh, once I started, I started enjoying. I said, okay, you know, in my span of uh, 48 years of my performing experience, gone across the globe, and I come across different um, theaters and different um, venues. I said, okay, this is one kind of a venue. But yeah, Monash. Sometimes the name itself is so much in your mind. I said, okay, this is Monash. Right. You know, the name that we always, I mean, the, the universities, and especially I, I'm very fond of universities because I'm also equally into academic. Uh, yeah, acad yes, academics. Uh, I'm, I'm fond of that, especially the venues. So that was more behind my mind. Okay, this belongs to Monash. I'm happy for it. So. Beautiful. Uh, since you mentioned about academic uh, background, sometimes they say as an artist, it doesn't necessarily uh, matter if you have an academic background as a dancer mm -hmm. to be a performer, which is true. Yeah, which is uh, true. But uh, there are certain dancers who love to take it on an academic line. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always loved the theory of dance and I've yeah. always wanted to explore. I know you're doing your PhD mm -hmm. as well. Uh, tell us what entices you, what what you know makes you go further and further in, all, in, in seek of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, probably it's because of, uh, you know, I being the niece of the legendary Mastro uh, Mridangam Vidwan, uh, Guru Karikudi Mani sir, I always feel because, you know, always if you have somebody, a role model, right. always guiding you and, uh, you know, as your mentor, you want your standards, you know, by, you know, default it keeps, you want to achieve something new, you want to do something new. And then once you're done with it, then you want to again go to the next level. So that's always that urge is there to go on exploring. And basically also like academics, um, you know, but as you rightly said, not necessarily the performers. I mean, if you see the performers of 30, 40 years back. Right. Highly acclaimed you know, performers. Yeah, yeah. yeah, highly acclaimed performers. It was all, all about the performance. And I remember my own guru, Srimati Indra Rajan, who is absolutely has, had never, uh, you know, she had the formal education, but then when it comes to the, um, the dance, especially the kanakas, the calculations, when she actually composes some, you know, rhythm patterns, she's so accurate. And I used to wonder how this is possible. So I think, you know, these are two independent entities where you feel that, okay, as a dancer, you have your own intellect, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, yeah, academics is again a different, but then when you combine it, uh, you know, you can present yourself better, especially to a global audience, because you can explain probably context, yeah, yeah, what exactly you're doing. And it's more, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to see our Indian classical dance, you know, to go to so many countries, right? People, you know, which is anyway is happening. Yeah, we have a very unique style of presentation, mm. uh, especially with regard to our Abhinaya, which is not very common yeah. in the West, uh, of course, or in most other dance forms. Yes. Uh, so um, I've always felt that you know our Abhinaya or yeah. even uh, the aspect of uh, Laya, 
has been very unique to our right. But what do you think we would have to do to make it more uh, 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 palpable in the uh, larger scenario? Yeah, uh, see, I what I feel is that uh, maybe from the traditional margam is anyway there. Right. So from the traditional margam, which our great gurus have given a very beautiful way for us to you know actually go through that so easily and with a lot of dedication and perseverance and hard work and devotion you know we have gone through the uh, the curriculum of uh, margam mm -hmm. from there i feel that now you have to you know go to a next level where you want you want to explore new things which is more relevant to the present generation right. to the present trend across the globe mm -hmm. Uh, the topics maybe you know depends it's not all about always about mythology but why don't you take the mythology and the social theme and somewhere you know try kind and of try and connect right. and then okay say so this is what it is mm -hmm. it happened in mythology so you know maybe we should also even at the social level if we can come up with some new themes mm -hmm. more um, understandable to this audience the present generation audience i think that will be a better option i think so possible but yeah Having said that, we still have the, especially I think you must know how to judge the pulse of the audience in the right. sense if I'm going to perform maybe in, in Chennai right. to a very hardcore connoisseurs of music and dance, I have to do a kind of a, a, margam, a, a, margam, margam, margam. a kind of a set of items. But when I come out, maybe, you know, so it all depends. As an artist, you must know to judge to be what kind of audience you're performing, where you're performing. And hmm. I think that makes more sense. Right. I think as uh, as dancers, as artists, we have a social responsibility to bring reforms to the society. Yes. Uh, I, as a practitioner of Kuchipudi, mm -hmm. come from the Bhagavad Gita, yeah. and the, the trend has been always to, you know, change, uh, show the social uh, reforms or, you know, bring about social reforms yeah. through our art. While Bharatanatyam follows a different uh, yeah. way, you know, it's, it comes from the Devda, Devdasi Sampradayam, where it is more of a bhakti marga, mm -hmm. you, you connect to God. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a direct connection between the artist and the, uh, the God. Um, though uh, there have been lots of experimental works happening with Bharatanatyam, there have been artists who use social, uh, social themes. What has been your most experimental work? Yeah, I have, uh, I mean, if I, first thing is, um, the very Bharatanatyam, very typical Margam level, have come up with new thalas huh. because of uh, Guru Karakuri Mani sir's training. Mm. I have explored new thalas, new rhythm patterns. In fact, uh, I am doing my research study in that. Mm. And then coming out of that, because uh, you know, basically, I come from Hyderabad, which is a cosmopolitan city in the southern part of India. So I have uh, a fairly good knowledge about the different languages. Right. So I have done thematic productions in Telugu, Tamil, Sanskrit, Hindi, uh, then uh, Marathi, Abhangs, full uh -huh. length, and also in English. Right. And uh, yeah, probably sometimes it can oh in English because I have done themes, uh, social themes. When you said social themes, I have done about organ donation and the neurobiology of dance, how the nervous system, you know, the connection between the nervous system and the human body in a dance, I mean, how it actually you connect. Mm -hmm. Because I did that with a neurosurgeon. Right. I collaborated with a neurosurgeon. And then I did about AIDS awareness, right. HIV and AIDS awareness. And then I did about weavers community, even before, because right now the government of India has declared August 8th as the you know, National Handloom Day. Mm -hmm. Even before declaring that, I had done because I thought that the weavers community is something that you know India can be proud about and slowly Absolutely. we are losing out. Yeah, on that so page. yeah on that. So I want to do something for that and I did that. So this way you know I feel that uh, these things and also about women empowerment. Right. I mean taking the stories of mythological stories about Ahalya, Gandhari and this was in English actually. Right. Very beautifully written about uh, Ahalya. I mean uh, how to see the, the 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 character of Ahalya from the other side, right? So this way it has given me scope through Bharatanatyam because I feel Bharatanatyam with its strong I as a practitioner of Bharatanatyam for more than four and a half plus decades, I feel that because of its strong grammatical content and all that you know it's so uh, very 
ಭರತನಾಟ್ಯಂ first you come with the script and then you go with the music and then you go with the rhythm and then you go with the choreography so keeping that final end product of choreography you start the work of scripting it also right so that at every level you see that this is not a margam right. but this is something a different right. concept hmm. so that we let's talk about banis uh, how significant do you think banis are these days? see if i it's a very interesting topic as such because earlier um for 40 50 years back the gurus the great gurus used to live in you know particular small regions. Yeah, regions let's say whether it's in tanjavur or pandanallur or valgur right. so they would come out of this so it used to be called as okay valgur bani mm-hmm. tanjavur bani pandanallur bani do i do pandanallur bani style but i feel that artist of my generation itself mm-hmm. that slowly started uh, you know kind of uh, coming together all the, the style shrinking, shrinking. Right. shrinking and then because you are at the end of the day you are taking bharatnatyam at a global level right. and even to talk about bani mm-hmm. this is a very strong feeling mm-hmm. that i also i mean i personally have and there are many senior artists at least i can talk on behalf of myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that to talk about bani one needs to have at least 25 years of performing experience right but so- sometimes it's very painful and very surprising that uh, a child of who is just 10 year old mm-hmm. and the mother comes and says oh you know she belongs to so and so bani mm-hmm. to talk about bani you are not to talk about the bani you need this experience right. because the basic grammar because the grammar cannot change in bani mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's aramandi or the 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 calculations no 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 my bani doesn't give me no bani says to do anything do wrong anything because like the, the basic structure is there hmm. it's only the practice of and that to this this is relations and style yeah so, i mean po i mean like if you if you talk about you know a very traditional dress i'm just hmm. giving as an example hmm. you can wear a kurta and then a pajama mm-hmm. if you wear a pajama and then kurta then at the end of the day it makes the same, the same. <laughs> but then it's just the approach is different right. but this also used to be earlier mm-hmm. i do agree there is depth without bani there is nothing this is just to give that okay you know i belong to sense of school but okay. may i ask you like as we evolve you know every every artist has the yeah. responsibility to put in their soul into yeah. that art and eventually like you know uh, i learned from a guru that l- the guru has learned from another yeah. guru there is of course an, an element of individuality that comes yeah, into it creativity and what i i perceive and what i have done you know it, my my style applies to it at the end of the day do you think as we progress as as uh, time goes the element of bani will totally get diluted you know probably dance as art as such indian yeah, art will maybe each, come to one platform each individual i think after fairly maybe of 20 years or 15 years or 20 years you know they they start you know the creativity starts mm-hmm. coming in and where you have your own individual mm-hmm. uh, what do you call you know kind of a presentation when you actually do it okay this is her you know i don't say that um the bani i i would as much uh, you know wish that there should be a strong segmented bani mm. but then for good i think we can only stay good from the other styles mm. and then that's what now the artists are doing i think the next generation the younger generation is all the more into it where they want to you know kind of uh, have the best of the everything so right. in the process you know you are i think you are benefited by not to have the best of all the banis in you mm-hmm. is going to make you a better dancer, better dancer. and you are going to be more uh, you know kind of the your creativity is going to be much more widened and that's how the world is heading to now beautiful on that note may i ask you because you said bharatnatyam and bani you take the best elements uh, as we are we are on an international platform now yes. and we are at a stage where we want to portray indian classical dance yes uh we have so many styles of eight eight classical dances yes um at the end of the day do you think what matters is just the indian classical dance and not the titles which is bharatanatyam yeah. kuchipudi mohiniyattam 
ah uh, that's uh, okay it's maybe i get yeah at this point of time okay maybe still there is some there identification are yes advances yes. but then you know if you see from an audience point of view you know when they come and sit in an auditorium they want to enjoy the concert right they are not going to be technical oh you know this hand used to be like that they they, they don't know anything when they just watch a dance they want to feel it very nice and the grammar should be strong and the presentation should be strong and in fact to that to that extent where there are there are some tribanga moves in mm -hmm. odc which is so so graceful mm -hmm. and uh, i feel sometimes we, it, uh, we actually apply that in bharatnatyam also right especially in thematic productions right. okay especially even in margam when you are going to show a particular verse which mm -hmm. is going to describe about a particular situation mm -hmm. and if that situation demands to intensify the character you may take an element like for example if you take narasimha avatar uh -huh. you can take an um, element from kathakali right you know a bit uh, you know more uh, a stronger presentation mm -hmm. and when you are going to show a delicate character maybe you can take from odc mm -hmm. that doesn't mean see the, this is oh this is this is not it's not the question of being too kind of technically yeah, yeah stuck on to one stuck on to one see at the end of the day you have to reach out to the audience to show the what emphasis the, the character mm -hmm. so that's only then the audience will also be able to connect and when the audience connects with the artist only then there is going to be rasa anubhuti uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, that rasa anubhuti if you are not able to give and say that oh you know i belong to this style that you know i think uh, style is very good i mm -hmm. even i appreciate it but then at the global level and even in you know in chennai mm -hmm. i think if you can you know emphasize on the character mm -hmm. and there is a permissible level mm -hmm. i don't say that you should go out of the permissible level mm -hmm. and you cannot measure that in terms of numbers and say okay this is the level 20% 10% no that's the capacity of an of the individual artist mm -hmm. the acceptability on you because each artist is different right in the sense each artist is with the learners where uh, you know some uh, let's say some colors will suit on a particular artist mm -hmm. some moves will suit on a particular the same move may not suit on another artist so you have to be very individualistic in while training okay this kind of the moves will suit on this artist so maybe you'll have to, rather than saying oh this is all it this is all it is i mean no rigid uh, mm -hmm. you know kind of uh, so uh, that's what mm -hmm. i also feel you know suppose we take uh, jay jay devas gita govind mm -hmm. and the ashtapati mm -hmm. uh, ashtapati has a very strong uh, bhakti marga tradition mm -hmm. it also has a very uh, strong prema marga tradition yeah. it depends on who is portraying it and how the artist portrays yeah. it Uh, have you ever felt that um, an artist should understand the soul of a song or the soul of the composer while doing the presentation sometimes they take their artistic freedom and they deliver it in what emotion fits the best for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. uh, i've seen ashtapati in various formats uh, what is your thought ah i think um, you know you have to have that sensitivity of mm -hmm. how the author has written it and you know so that's very important because um, especially when you are doing ashtapadi which is a, it's a very fine line that you are cutting between the prema marga and the bhakti marga if you are going to overdo on you know Either especially option. yes i think uh, you know because when you are representing our indian culture you have to represent with lot of dignity and grace because um, our tradition and our culture what we have been handed over by our you know the great gurus is was something different so maintaining that what i am trying to tell is only about the presentations global level is but that is not going to give us the freedom of our core values right you cannot come out of our core our core values have to be maintained because it's a classical art form there should be a lot of dignity mm. even in that prema prema bhakti you should you know mm. there should be the acceptability where the audience should feel comfortable to sit and watch the dance right. not feel oh my god Awkward. Uh, awkward. Right. That's one thing that I I can never uh, you know personally accept. Right. Yeah. You should give that comfort level where you should always make them feel that it, this is so divine, so beautiful, so graceful. Mm -hmm. Not go beyond that because our classical dance is not meant for that. Ma'am, you're one of those um, rare artists uh, who you know who are lucky enough to perform with your daughters on stage. Um, so there are a 
few popular mother du mother daughter duo combinations in India now. Uh, you, you and your daughter Vaishnavi has performed together. Tell us about that experience. Ah, yes, uh, Vaishnavi and me have been performing uh, a lot of concerts together and uh, yeah, she is into multiple styles. Uh, she learned Bharatnatyam from me, of course. She does Bharatnatyam, she does Kuchipudi, she does what she learned Odissi from Guru Durkachar and Ranbir. She came to Odisha and she learned. And then from Vedantam Satyam in uh, Kuchipudi. Kuchipudi. And then uh, she learned Kalari from Vallabhatta School of Kalari from Kerala. Yeah. And she learned contemporary from Atakalari Bangalore and uh, Martha Graham in New York. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's sometimes very funny when somebody, oh my god, five styles, even one style is so difficult. But then I feel these days youngsters are very, very brilliant and they're very intelligent and they channelize. It's like, okay, I'm studying mathematics, I'm studying English, I'm studying social, I'm studying science. Yeah. So when you're able to compartmentalize all these kind of subjects, it's also this Why dance is also becoming like that. Mm -hmm. And she's she's quite successful. Right. So yeah, we keep doing together and when we do some thematic productions, mm -hmm. so we when we show the characters, we bring out the elements mm -hmm. from these styles, these styles, majorly maintaining Bharatnatyam, mm -hmm. but then just to give elements a little spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, you know, the very little spice mm -hmm. when sometimes you feel like, yes, why not? Uh, so it's like that and we enjoy performing together. Yeah. We also do Tani, Tani Avartana. Mm -hmm. where we do jigal bandis. In fact, recently we did, um, me and Vaishnavi, we did a jigal bandi with uh, Pandit Bridj Maharaji and Shaswati Senji in uh, uh, US just a few months back. That is so, God has been kind that, uh, you know, mother, daughter, both. Because mother still performing, you know, it's sometimes challenging. She says it's challenging for her to match with my, uh, you know, because as a daughter, you know, to match with the mothers. I feel it's also equally challenging for us Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very a young and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Young and the experience coming together. All right. Uh, you've conducted a lot of workshops mm -hmm. uh, internationally and what what is your thought on uh, uh, Indian uh, background children uh, or students uh, learning you know classical dance abroad? Yeah, they are very good now and I think in last uh, maybe five to ten or maybe ten years, Mm -hmm. I think the uh, world has become very small where they are able to connect very much and um, they are able to continue from where we left mm -hmm. the earlier trips and there is a continuity. Uh, so I feel uh, children are able to kind of, it's not, you know, sometimes even though they are living in other countries like whether Australia or US, mm -hmm. still they are able to get the best out of the artist because the, the passion for them, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I, uh, I personally find it very interesting when I go to other countries, especially US and of course Australia and London, where when I conduct the workshops, they are able to understand what I talk about, especially the technical aspects, even about the lay aspects, which is quite difficult, you know, I mean, we can't expect so easily the children to understand, I mean, the mathematics, the grammar of uh, the dance, but they do understand and they want to slowly start going in the direction and you know, experimenting and what they have understood, want to actually you know, kind of implement in the dance and slowly start going towards the choreography of their own, maybe in schools. Right. So it is good. So I've observed that uh, in Australia, yeah. uh, children usually try to connect to things that are relevant to them. Yeah. And it is highly essential that you use a style that you are comfortable with, that you are aware of. Yeah. So uh, uh, it's interesting how children come up with this topic of, you know, I, I need to, you know, depict so and so, which is yeah. probably a very social concern, yeah. be it environmental problems yeah. or yeah. be it uh, women um, yeah. uh, centric issues. Yeah. So they, they want to see how they can apply the grammar of Indian classical dance yeah. and portray it. But I think we have a very strong uh, sense of uh, uh, how we use our emotions and uh, expressions. Yeah. expressions. I think now that has come it's beautiful and that's I think uh, that's one thing that Indian classical style can boast of is the emotions mm -hmm. the way we use our you know angikam our face you know you know our eyes and you know it makes that uh, effect of the whole abhinaya. Okay. So I think Indian classical dance is very highly emotional, mm -hmm. so spiritual, so philosophical. Yeah, and it's probably it's one of the best instruments for personality development. Yeah, of well. course, yeah. of course. That's why I think the dance. So it's very important, uh, especially back home in India. Also, parents feel that their children must learn, uh, especially the girls learning dance is very important because it's not only about dance; it's about the whole personality. Right. You know the confidence 
and uh, your mind body your confidence you know the mind body coordination your confidence your memory your multitasking all this is you know really develops you know? so so that's that's why i think it's very important to learn and most of the children are into it right uh thank you so much uh, ma'am for spending so much time thank with us so and it's been great having you on the icon so until we meet another time thank you namaste, namaste.